Welcome everybody, thanks for tuning in for another review from the 2023 EMTB Shootout presented by Fox Racing and Schwalbe Tires. Today we're going to be reviewing the Scott Patron E-Ride 900. This is a Bosch Performance CX Gen 4 equipped e-bike with a 160 millimeters of travel front and rear. So let's get into this bike, see how it rides. So if you saw last year's e-bike shootout, you might remember that the Scott Ransom took a massive award and impressed, I think you were, I know we both yeah. absolutely loved uh, it. Love Everyone, that we all loved yeah. the bike. So we were very excited to see how the shorter travel, more, I guess, well-rounded trail minded Patron would do. It is a very unique and cool looking bike that we've been seeing at shows for quite some time. And we finally got our hands on one. So. Uh, let's get into some of the details on this bike. It is a carbon mainframe. Again, uh, it's got 160 millimeters of their virtual four link suspension. It is a Scott and it does feature their twin lock suspension adjustment tuning on the fly, which we'll get into uh, on the ride characteristic. Uh, Bosch power tube 750 watt hour battery with a Kiox 300 display and the Bosch LED remote. Um, a lot of Synchros in-house parts on the build and we've got a Shimano XT drivetrain and brake setup. So uh, we'll get into the geometry real quick and then touch on the ride performance. So our size large has a 473.6 millimeter reach with a 651 stack height. It has a 65 degree head tube angle, which is definitely on the steeper side for the travel category, a 76.9 degree seat tube angle, and a overall wheelbase of 1,263.7 millimeters, thanks to the 454 millimeter length chainstays, which are a bit on the long side and aid in this bike's, I would say, planted feel and awesome climbing capabilities. And it has a 347 millimeter bottom bracket height. So uh, let's get into initial ride impressions, looks. Ryan, I know you didn't do a whole lot of study and you just got on the I bike and went. I hopped on the thing. First off, looks sick. Um, hopped on, instantly comfortable. Okay. Um, we dropped into that first trail yesterday, which was steep, wet, loose, just roots everywhere. And I had no issues. It was it was really fun to ride. And then shortly after that, we, we rolled up to that, um, that drop and I was confident enough within like two minutes of riding the bike to hit it. Right. Mm -hmm. So I got along with this bike real well okay real well i really like i really like scott too the the bikes that we rode they they suit my personality okay um sort of playful okay i, I really enjoy them okay and i think you also are a big fan of the value aspect of a lot of the scott bikes this one yeah, here 100%. is a bit more than the winner last year but it, this one is uh eight thousand seventy nine ninety nine. but uh with a full xt build performance level stuff it's what do you think of the value aspect of this i think it's great the only thing that i would i would change and i don't really care for is the twin lock and all the levers and cables okay i, I would i'd rather swap that out for more adjustment and suspension or or something else and so that's that's my that's my those are that's my only dislike on this bike okay all right nick uh, you not so much the I same. Didn't, I didn't love this bike. Okay. Uh, you know, the, it does look amazing. Like the okay. fit and finish on this bike is top notch. Okay. Uh, the I feel like it tries to be too much to two people or too many people a little bit. Uh, All right. It, the twin lock is this a is this a aggressive trail bike or is this an enduro bike? Okay. And it comes with the travel to support an enduro category bike okay. but it comes with geometry from a trail bike with a single tube uh shock that i felt got overwhelmed a little bit okay so but it does climb amazing i mean you do flick that twin lock you get 115 mil of travel all of a sudden and this thing perks up and has a nice long rear end and you can jam up the steepest of climbs okay. and has the power in the bosch system to support it okay but i felt like a I always was like, oh, this thing's very comfortable going down. It's planted, but the steep front end just doesn't quite support the speed that you're going. So okay. I felt like it just didn't quite have it for me. Okay. Okay. Um, so I think we have riders in both categories, right? Mm -hmm. I know Sour Patch 
didn't love the bike, similar to you. Yeah. Had some great characteristics, but overall not ideal. Frenchy, you love it. Yep. I lean a little bit more towards your side, um, but I also totally hear what you're saying, and I absolutely agree. This bike left us confused in exactly what category it should be in, and maybe it's just a bike that's sort of without category because we. You know, while we're testing these bikes, obviously our goal is to help give you guys the information to make an educated buying decision or at least help with that. And I think when you look at the number, right, 160 mil travel front and rear, right, we're like, oh, cool, it's going to be an enduro bike. Mm -hmm. It's not an enduro bike. Um, like you said, right, that this shock, if you get it out on a DH trail where we took a lot of the other enduro e-bikes, this rear shock would heat up you would lose some rebound damping, it would get a little unmanageable, then you'd get that 65 degree head tube angle involved, and all of a sudden you've got a bike that starts feeling a little bit skittish um, and not quite so composed as some of the burlier options. The flip side is on many other trails where some of those really aggressive enduro bikes started to you know, feel sluggish or a little bit muted and overkill, you've got a bike that is just an absolute blast. It is fast. The twin lock, like you said, I, I also don't love it, um, but I did use it sometimes. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be bummed if it wasn't there though, and we had the ability to, to tune the fork a bit more and have maybe a bigger shock. Obviously, they want to keep that shock hidden, yeah. so that sort of limits the options to get a shock with a reservoir on there, but um, ultimately, I think what we came away with thinking is that this bike, we created a category, yeah. maybe, I don't know, maybe we didn't create a category, <laughs> Robert. Is that, is Super Trail a category? So, Super Trail, I think That seems might reasonable. Be. It's not enduro, but it's not quite trail. So you've got more travel, more comfort, more confidence than like a 140 bike or a 140, 150 bike. So I think maybe your touring rider, your adventure rider, maybe someone who isn't riding overly steep, gnarly terrain, but wants the plush and comfortable ride of a 160 mil bike, but still have some sporty handling, this is gonna be a really, really solid option. Not to say you can't push this bike hard, right? I mean, French, you sent it on some yeah. pretty sizable step downs. We rode yeah. it down, we rode it down tracks that you could legitimately take a downhill bike on, and it's still here, and we're still here. Um, I just think that it's probably not going to want to be at home there day in and day out. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. Okay. Um, so what else do we want to talk about on this? Oh, um, electronics and integration yeah, yeah. stuff. Um, I know a lot of people aren't loving the internal or headset cable routing stuff. For us, didn't seem to be an issue. We haven't had any mechanical or electrical problems. The frame is still working. We've been in some brutal conditions for quite a while with this bike. Um, one thing that I will say about this bike, how Scott has shifted this motor up is great for ground clearance. Uh, it's got these nice ventilation holes on top to kind of help facilitate air moving through and cooling that motor. But what I did notice and some of the other riders noticed too was those holes sort of direct sound up. So as you are pedaling and really working this motor hard on some steep climbs, the, the noise to the rider above those holes is a little bit louder. So if you're one of those riders who really hates the sound of an e-bike and doesn't want to hear that, um, that's something to note. I think uh, I wouldn't say it was totally distracting or would be a deal breaker if this was kind of the bike in the category I was looking for. But nevertheless, I know some people really are critical about motor noise and e-bike noise. So uh, that's something worth figuring. It's got some um, sweet tail I The tail, you know, it cool. it's pretty, Safety first. I really like, I really <laughs> like it, dude. It's like a futuristic <laughs> Batman e-bike, man. It's like, you know, like yeah. the little mud guard, yeah. the taillights. It's a pretty sick bike. Mm -hmm. I gotta say it is a lot of fun yeah. to ride. Um, but one other thing that's really cool about uh, kind of the integration and user friendliness is their included little sag meter on the side nice. of the frame. Yep. Um, there is like a little kind of guide and on the side of the frame are painted 25 and 30% markings. Took me a little um, while to find that. 
It, it did. I popped up in the cover and I was looking for the Zach Painter. And <laughs> right on the side well, of the side. It's not a good design, <laughs> but it's yes. conveniently on the side. On the drive side, or sorry, on the non-drive side of the bike, you can just sit and see where that goes. Uh, I will say more aggressive riders are definitely going to want to run that bike on the stiff side, 25% or maybe less. Um, I kind of now yeah. I'm remembering this is from the setup I was running at 30% and I was not liking the bike. We were not driving. Um, Did you, you know, the travel or? It just was packing and it was really stiff and it just felt like I was just buried midway through. Just, oh, okay. And we stopped, just felt stiff yeah. and a lot of feedback. And then I aired up and went just below like 24-ish percent sag. And then we dropped yeah. back in and then Nick I mean, who was right behind me was like, dude, that was like, you just jumped on a different yeah, bike. It's like night and day difference. Yeah. yeah. So that this thing just came alive. So I will say aggressive riders are probably going to just save yourself some time and go straight to 25% sag and, and maybe even a, a hair less. It will reward you and make this bike really come alive. And I think that is something worth noting because some riders may get on it with 30% or 32 because it's not mm -hmm. quite right. And it will really affect how this bike performs. So um, set it up right and it will reward. So uh, that is the Scott Patron E-Ride, a very solid contender. Please subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for the rest of the reviews. And of course, the grand finale where we'll be putting this bike against all 13 of the competitors in this year's shootout. Thanks again to Fox Racing and Schwalbe Tires for sponsoring. And of course, thank you all for watching, engaging, and leaving comments. Stay tuned and we'll see you out on the trails.